everyone, it's Deborah with Pinching Pesos, and this is video four in the Parting Out a Keurig series. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a variation listing today. I mentioned that in the third video that I was now using variation listings for my part uh, listings instead of listing them individually, and it's been fairly successful. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do it. So first off, we're going to go ahead and, you know, just do our normal title, Keurig B60, replacement, parts, um, and go ahead and put a coffee maker. It's a Keurig, it doesn't need a whole lot of description. Now when I first had the idea about doing variation listings, I was actually very worried. Um, since they always tell us that we need to make sure that our title is keyword rich and if your keywords aren't there uh, normally when somebody does a search it comes up as um, related search it'll come down in the secondary search if the t if the keywords not in the title that you're you know that you put in so I was really concerned that I was doing myself a disservice by um, doing variation listings, but I found out something really interesting uh, once it was all over with was that the titles that you put in for your variations actually are counted as original title keywords, so you don't lose any standing and rank, and it actually might benefit you quite a bit because that's a lot of extra keywords that aren't fitting into your normal uh, title space. So we're going to go ahead and there is a replacement parts category which helps cut down on any confusion um, about whether it's parts or not. And I actually have a store category that is replacement parts. Um, let's see, replacement, I'm trying to think of more keywords here, replacement, spare parts. I'm going to get fun here. Repair. Repair your coffee maker. I know your is not a keyword, um, but it might be something that somebody puts into a Google search, even though Google doesn't play with eBay very much anymore. Um, I have a lot of characters left here, and so... Now, I, either sometimes I put them as four parts or not working, or I'll put them as used because they are working. Um, but today I'm just going to go ahead and put four parts. Tested, in working condition, may have minor surface scratches. That's kind of my default um, condition note on parts. So what we're going to do uh, first, sorry, I got a little out of my way is we're going to click this button right here that says list multiple variations of your item. We're going to create variations. Now what you do in here is you put what it is. So I just put replacement part. And the value, it's a drip tray. And you'll see it puts your replacement part. That's going to be your variation. Variations can be anything from color to uh, style to, like, if you had a bunch of t-shirts and you had them in red, blue, and green, and you had them in size large and medium, then you could do var different variations like that. So, <coughs> so I'm going to start putting our, our parts, water reservoir, a suction. think that's the proper term. Um, a good way that I normally try to get part, uh, exact part names, is I will go to the manufacturer and try to get um, a breakdown of the units. Um, that's helpful on things that are outside parts, like rotisseries and uh, different, you know, like uh, basically parts that you're taking off the outside. This system we actually gutted, so they're not necessarily going to have 
all of those parts listed because those are manufacturing type parts. Those aren't things that somebody normally buys. And on this particular listing, um, my market is not your typical customer. My market is actually repairmen. Um, the reason why I decided to part out this Keurig was because I was trying to go for the most difficult method possible. Um, I didn't, and I, what I'll do is I'll make sure to go back in and do another breakdown, but this one on a more simple machine that would be just typical parts that you would take off. Um, like the normal Keurig uh, part out is going to be water reservoir, drip tray, the puncture, and maybe the lid or, you know, it might break down into three or four parts, but that's about it. People aren't gutting these machines <laughs> very often. Um, so we're just going to put a couple things just for example. Um, top puncture. Okay, so this is what we're going to put here. Just, <coughs> that's not all of our parts, but that's what we're going to put. All right, now these are your normal item specifics that normally come up on your screen. Uh, so what I'm going to put here for type is I'm just going to put replacement part. And it's a Keurig. Now these parts actually for the B60, um, I did find out were compatible with other models. They were uh, compatible, I believe, with the B55 and the B50. Um, so right down here on the listing where it says compatible product, um, you could put the individual um, models or you can put them down here in the model. It's really up to you on how you want to set up your system. So I will be coming back after I do some more research and putting the additional model numbers that it's compatible with. Okay, so here are our replacement parts. Make sure the ones that you have here are correct because if you edit these names at any point, you have to start over. You can add them, you just can't edit them. So I made, I learned that the hard way. Now on each one of your items, you actually get 12 photos. So you have your 12 main photos and then you have your actual individual photos of each variation and each one of those gets 12 photos. What I normally do for my main photo is I actually go into Picasa and I create a collage. Now Picasa is a free photo editing um, software and so what I would do is I would go in here and I would pick out my parts. I'm Right now I'm just pressing control and then clicking the mouse. Okay, so I've got my parts, and then I'm going to go up to create, and I'm going to create a picture collage. And from there, I'm just going to rearrange them a little. This is not the <coughs> final picture, but I'm just trying to demonstrate for you on how simple it can be to make a collage. All right, and then you just go over into your section that says create collage. And you crop it down. And then this would become your gallery photo. I find this to be the best method on doing a variation parts listing um, because it shows multiple parts in the listing so people don't get confused. If I just put a picture of a Keurig, I can guarantee you somebody's going to think they're getting a Keurig.
even though the listing says like five times that it's replacement parts. So we're going to just go into our collages for Picasso. And, oh, I forgot to save. Okay, so here's our collage. So that's going to be our main photo. And then each individual item is going to get its own photo as well. So what did I say this was the drip tray? So there's those photos. And got our suction hose. I'm not going to put all the photos. I'll go back and edit them, but I'm just trying to show you. And we'll have our puncture. So then we have all of our photos and then we're going to continue and then this is where you put in your price and you can also put your quantity. So we'll say this is $14.95, $14.95 and then we'll put this one for $9.95. <coughs> Alright, so now we're back to our listing that looks familiar. And then what I normally put here is I just put in something general replacement parts for Keurig B60. Did I spell Keurig wrong? Yes. B60, available parts. And then I reiterate what parts are available. So I normally will come back up here where it has the replacement part and I just copy what got put in. And I'll make those um, like bullet point, bullet pointed of what's available. So we have those, and then now when you get down here, um, it has your duration and payment. Um, what I've been doing for the shipping option is I've been putting FedEx Smart Post, and FedEx Smart Post is kind of the slowest method of um, shipping even though it says it's two to eight days and it will tell your customer they're going to get it like in four days or something like that. I've just been using that option because um, it gives them, it does give them a time and then it also, um, it sets up the expectations properly. Since FedEx uses the postal service for the last mile of service, um, the customer is either going to expect to receive a FedEx package or they're going to expect to receive something from the post office. So either method of shipping my item, they're still going to receive it the way that they expect it. Now what I have been doing on my listings is I've been putting a general weight of about 13 ounces and I've been actually putting them into the global shipping program. Um, I didn't have any issues with the three items that shipped off to Canada in the global shipping program, even though they were much heavier than 13 ounces. Um, 
Now if you want to, what you can do is not go in through the Global Shipping Program. You can say that you aren't, um, you aren't, yeah. Do calculated shipping and then you essentially what you would do is try to select one of the countries that you would be willing to ship to even if it was oversized and then go down here and select the countries that you're willing to ship to and what they would have to do is contact you for additional rate information for me I'm I'll just stick with the global shipping program um, and let eBay work out <coughs> whatever shipping method they'd like to use to get closest to the rate that I charge um, like I said I haven't had any problems doing that but what you can do is also just not put it into the global shipping program not offer any international shipping and you lose out on your international customers and you could put it in your listing that you do take international customers for them to contact you. It's really up to you and how you want to run your business. <coughs> so our listing is complete. Oh, that's fun. Try that again. Okay, so our listing is finished, and then what we can do is I'll show you how it comes up. So here's your main photo, and then if they select on the item, it brings up the picture for them. Like that. And then they just buy it now. And Ooh. That's awful. I that's the first time I've seen that in my listings. I haven't seen that yet. I only only read about it. I hate that. That's that needs to go away. Okay, so anyway, so that's how you make a variation listing. If you have any questions, um, send me an email, info at pinchingpesos.com. Make sure to comment below. Um, and uh, like, comment, subscribe. And if you, you know, would like to see more of the series, make sure you do subscribe. And have a great day. I hope this was helpful. Bye.